What's up, Taiwan? I'm Erica Liu with news from here in Taiwan and around the world. Taiwan has responded to China's comments at the United Nations General Assembly that a UN resolution from decades ago gives Beijing the right to represent Taiwan in the global body. Chi 2758 was passed unanimously by the General Assembly in 1971. It switched representation for China's seat at the organization from the Republic of China, Taiwan's official name, to the People's Republic of China, or PRC. Beijing has used the resolution in recent years to justify blocking Taiwan's participation at UN bodies, such as the World Health Organization and in international sport competitions, where Taiwan is usually required to participate under the name Chinese Taipei. U.S. President Joe Biden has announced new defense support for Taiwan. Biden has approved 567 million U.S. dollars in new equipment, services and training, the highest amount of such funding on record. Beijing has condemned Washington's continued sale of weapons to Taipei. Taiwan has been complaining about a growing backlog of delayed weapons deliveries from the U.S. Railway enthusiasts turned out on Monday morning as the first of a new set of electric locomotives officially entered service in Taiwan. The E-500 locomotives set out from northern Jilong City bound for Pingdong in the country south. The new engines are built by Japan's Toshiba. They'll operate intercity passenger and freight services and are more powerful than the older locomotives they are replacing. They have also been engineered for local conditions to withstand typhoon winds as well as hot and humid weather. The locomotives also have a backup system to limit speeds in case the main system fails. Ireland's first female president has been in Taipei, sharing her experiences with some of Taiwan's most promising students. Mary Robinson came to Taiwan to accept this year's Tang Prize for Rule of Law. Harrell Hughes reports. A warm smile and a handshake from former Irish President Mary Robinson as she meets students from some of the most prestigious schools in Taipei. And first and foremost, I must say that it is an honor to be sitting here with the one and only Mary Robinson. Robinson, now 80 years old, became Ireland's first female president in 1990, seen as a key moment in the country's journey from a conservative and religious nation toward a more liberal society. After stepping down in 1997, she continued her work as the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights and later UN Special Envoy on Climate Change, fighting for equality and justice around the globe. Experiences she shared with the students. You know, believe in what you're doing. Have faith in that you're doing the right thing. And so that carried me forward. And then just briefly, when I was elected president, my whole attitude was, I'm going to do a better job precisely because I am a woman. I know that. Mary Robinson. Robinson was honored with a Tang Prize in Taipei a few days earlier. The Taiwan-based awards are given out every two years and recognize researchers around the world who, its organizers say, address issues critical to humanity in four categories. Sustainable development, biopharmaceutical science, sinology, and rule of law. Professor Robinson has constantly shown to the world her powerful advocacy on behalf of the most disadvantaged. And her passion and endeavor demonstrated a smart combination of legal acumen and practical solution to enhance rights and justice. Professor Ye, please present the Tang Prize Medal to Professor Mary Robinson. Robinson was the only woman to be awarded a Tang Prize this year in recognition of her decades of work in law and human rights. Previous prize winners include primatologist Jane Goodall and the scientist who developed the mRNA-based COVID vaccine. In her acceptance speech, Robinson addressed world leaders and their shared responsibilities to the planet. And last but not least, what can leaders do 
individually and collectively to move the world in a new and more hopeful direction in which rule of law is once again viewed as a core element of accountable governance systems dedicated to achieving a peaceful, just and sustainable planet for all. She had a similar message to the students of Taipei as she continues to work as a global leader, trying to focus the world's attention on human rights issues, urging youth participation, especially from the female students, through humor and collective responsibility, and setting an example for the future of Taiwan. Luffy Lee, Scott Huang, and Harrell Hughes for Taiwan Plus. A new style of short-form drama serial has quickly become a multi-billion dollar industry on Chinese social media. But these micro-dramas have already caught the attention of government censors. Eric Gao reports. Inside the walls of a medieval castle, a pivotal moment in this new form of melodrama, as actor Zhu Jian, in the role of a powerful patriarch, steps in to restore order. Given the scale of the production, you could be forgiven for thinking this is the set of a high-budget movie. But in fact, Zhu is shooting for microdrama series Grandma's Moon, one of countless examples of a new short-form video medium that's taking Chinese social media by storm. That appetite for snappy, short-form media has led to the rise of a multi-billion dollar industry in China with a unique approach to monetization. This new medium is attracting some big names, including Hong Kong director Stephen Chow of Kung Fu Hustle fame, who brought together Chinese comedy giants for his microdrama series, Take Me Home. But the sudden rise of microdramas has caught the attention of the Chinese government, always wary of the new, and apparently threatened by the medium's tendency toward melodrama. They've already told producers to take it down a notch. Those regulations require all microdramas to be licensed and bar content considered pornographic, violent, or spreading what the government considers wrong views on marriage and love. These echo limitations on other forms of media in China, which are forbidden to promote alternative relationships that might deviate from the mainstream value orientation of society, including same-sex relationships. <laughs> For actors like Zhu Jian, though, the industry has offered exciting new opportunities. And with some estimates saying the industry could more than double in value by 2027, it looks like microdramas may only get bigger. Fu Hua Hong, Luffy Li, Reese Ayers, and Eric Gao for Taiwan Plus. Thank you for watching What's Up Taiwan. You can visit the Taiwan Plus website or follow our social media for more stories from Taiwan and around the world. Finally today, Chile's iconic comic strip character Mafalda has turned 60 years old. To celebrate, this sculpture was unveiled in the capital, Santiago. I'm Erica Liu. Take care and see you next time.